6.3 Perform Function, Operations, and Compositions For of all sad functions of tongue or pen, the saddest one is, might have been. And of course I'm reading this might have been, just like I would read f of x. Operations on functions. Let f and g be n2 functions. A new function h can be defined by performing any of the four basic operations on f and g. So addition would just be defined as h of x equals f of x plus g of x. Okay, add them both up. And if we took our example here, then h of x would just be f of x plus g of x. And I would just add them up like normal. 5x plus x is 6x, and then I have plus 2. Subtraction is defined as h of x equals f of x minus g of x. And if I use my example functions, I have to remember that when I subtract, I must distribute that negative. So f of x minus x minus 2 is 4x minus 2. Multiplication, f of x times g of x. In my example function, that would just require me doing 5x times x plus 2. So now I have to distribute this 5x and I get 5x squared plus 10x. When I do division, I just do f of x divided by g of x, and of course I must make sure in this case that g of x is not equal to zero so that I don't divide by zero. And I'll explain that more in the example that we do right here. So when I say h of x equals f of x, which was 5x divided by x plus 2. So in this case, we need to make sure that this x plus 2 does not equal 0. In other words, that x does not equal negative 2. Because if x was equal to negative 2 in this case, then we would have had a division by 0, which we cannot do. So this is actually called a domain restriction. And remember the domain is what our x values can be. And so since our x cannot be equal to negative two, that's a domain restriction. And we'll talk a lot more about that. So, so far we've studied several types of functions. Uh, we've done linear function, we've done quadratic functions, we've done other polynomial functions of higher degree. And now we're just going to be talking about some power functions and if they can be written in this form, y equals ax to the b power, then it's called a power function. And just remember that b must be rational. So let's go ahead and use some of these operations on functions that we just learned about. Let's just add f of x plus g of x. So f of x is 5x to the 1 3rd and g of x is minus 11x to the 1 3rd. And since we're basically saying that we have five of these x to the 1 3rd and then we're subtracting 11 of these x to the 1 3rd, so you need to make sure that you're combining like terms here. And since they are, that means that I have a total of negative six of these x to the 1 3rd. And so that's my final answer. Now I want to subtract them, so I'm going to do 5x to the 1 3rd minus a negative 11x to the 1 3rd. In other words, add the two up. And again, since I have like terms, I have a total of 16 of these x to the 1 3rd. Remember, you're adding them, so it's like saying you have five apples minus 11 apples. That would be a total of negative six apples. All right, you can't have negative six apples, but you get my point, right? You need to make sure that you have like terms, okay? And you leave that as five apples minus 11 apples would give you negative six apples. Don't change that. Okay, so now we need to get into the domain. So what are the possible values of x? Let's look at f of x. 
f of x really has no restriction on the domain. All real numbers, and I can write it like that, or you can write all real numbers. When we're taking the cubed root, there is no restriction, remember, on the x. And g of x, again, we're taking uh, the cubed root of x, so that's all real numbers also. So that means that for a, f plus g, the domain is going to be all real numbers because since f of x was not restricted and g of x was also not restricted, then f plus g is not going to be restricted. And we can also see that from our final answer that we just have a cube root of x, which is all real numbers. In b, again, it's the same thing. Since f is not restricted and g is also not restricted, then f minus g is not going to be restricted. In other words, all real numbers. Now note, this is just because I was doing a cubed root, so I had no restrictions, but a um, little aside here. Now what if I had done that f of x was x to the 1 half power and g of x was negative 4 x to the 1 half power? Well, and let's just do the same exercise. f plus g would have been x to the 1 half minus 4x to the 1 half. In other words, I would have had a total of negative 3 of those x to the 1 halves because this would have been 1, right? Um, and then f minus g would have been x to the 1 half minus a minus, which is plus, 4x to the 1 half. And that would have been 5x to the 1 half. Okay, and so now the domain... What is the domain of, let's just look at f. Well, x to the 1 half power only takes values greater than or equal to 0, don't forget. That's restricted because I can't have root negative number, otherwise I would get an imaginary number. So my domain of f of x is actually restricted, and my domain of g of x is similarly restricted because, again, I am looking at x to the 1 half power. So you can take the square root of 0, that's just 0, but you cannot take the square root of a negative number and pop out a real number. So that means that f plus g would have the same restriction as these two do. In other words, x is greater than or equal to 0. And f minus g would have that same restriction also. And we will look at um, some functions where the domains are not the same, and you'll see what to do there. So let's look at this example. Now we're multiplying them. So we have 8x times 2x to the 5 6. Let's rewrite that as, do just the number part first, so you get 16x times x to the 5, 6. And you could put your invisible 1 there if you would like. Same basis, add the exponents, 16x to the, let's see, 5 plus 6, 11, 6. So we get 16x to the 11, 6. And then f of x divided by g of x would give us 8x divided by 2x to the 5 6 and if you would like to put your invisible 1 or we may as well put a 6 6 here right because um, we want a common denominator when we want to subtract division same basis subtract 8 divided by 2 is 4 6 6 minus 5 6 leaves us with x to the 1 6 in the top so what is the domain of a and b Okay, so in A, we are looking at the domain of 16x to the 11 6. Since we're taking an even root, that's the first thing I must look at. And since I'm doing that, I know that the x values can only take in positive numbers because this is an even root. If this had been an odd root, it would have been all real numbers. When I look at B, I see again, if I just look at this part, this answer right here, I see that the domain of 4x to the 1 6, the domain is x greater than or equal to 0. But I also must keep in mind in this one that the g of x cannot be equal to 0. Thou shalt not divide by 0. So this guy cannot be equal to 0. In order for anything to, any power to be equal to zero, that would mean that x would be equal to zero. So in other words, x cannot be equal to zero in this one. So my domain, 
is a combination of x is greater than or equal to zero, but x cannot equal to zero, which means that my final domain restriction for b is x is greater than zero, strictly greater than, because I combined this with this, and I just got this. A small company sells computer printers over the internet. The company's total monthly revenue, R, and cost, C, are modeled by the function R of x equals 120x and C of x equals 2,500 plus 75x, where x is a number of printers sold. Find R of x minus C of x, revenue minus cost. That would give me my profit. So I have 120 minus, don't forget your parentheses here, because we need to distribute that negative sign. 120 minus 2,500 minus 75x, and oops, I forgot to put my x's here, 120x, so it would make more sense. And so I get 45x minus 2,500 as my answer there. Explain what the difference means. Well, revenue minus cost is just uh, the profit. And here, let's see, um, we're dealing with monthly revenue and monthly cost. So explain what the difference means. That's just going to be our monthly profit. All right, now we get to deal with compositions of functions. And a composition of a function is defined as g of f of x. That's how I read this. I read it as g of f of x, okay? And what that means is that I'm going to do g to f of x. So I start with f of x, and then I do g to it. If I look at a function machine, I put an input in, all right? I put an x in and it pops f of x out. And usually that's my final answer. Y is my final answer, f of x. But now I'm going to stick that f of x into the g machine, into the g function, and it's going to pop out. I'm going to do g to f of x, all right? So this is a composition of functions. I put in my x into the f machine, and it pops out f of x. And then I put my f of x into the g machine, and it does g to f of x. So if I'm talking domain and range, the domain of f, just what I input into the f machine, is just the x, okay? So what I input into the f machine is just the x, and the range is what it pops out. It pops out the f of x, so this is the range. It pops out the f of x. But you'll see that that f of x then gets popped into the g machine. In other words, it is the domain of the g machine because it's what goes in. Remember, the domain is the input and the range is what pops out or the output. And you'll see that the output of the f machine is the same thing as the input to the g machine. Okay, and so we'll talk more about this, but really I think it's very helpful to think of it in terms of this machine. So in this problem here, I give you f of x and I give you g of x, and I tell you to find f of g of negative 3. So I need to first look inside. Okay, you always want to start with the inside and then go out. And so you first want to do g of negative 3, and then you're going to do f to that. So g of negative 3 just means let's look at g of x, and everywhere we saw an x, put in a negative 3. So we have negative 3 squared minus 1. In other words, 9 minus 1, or 8. So now it tells me to do f of g of negative 3, which popped out an 8. So do f of 8. And so just put an 8 in wherever I saw an x, 3 times 8 minus 4, which is 24 minus 4, or 20. And 20 is my final answer.
So see, that's not really that bad at all. Let's just do one more with numbers before we move on. Um, let's let f of x be equal to 2x minus 7, and let g of x be equal to x squared plus 4. And let's, in this case, find g of f of 3. So I'm going to do it a little bit differently than I did there, because in this one, they're telling you to do f of 3 first. Always look inside f of 3, use the f function and put in a 3 instead of the x, so 2 times 3 minus 7 is 6 minus 7 or negative 1. And then you're going to do g to that, so do g to f of 3, which popped out a negative 1. g a negative 1, put in a negative 1, negative 1 squared plus 4 is 1 plus 4 or 5. And that's my final answer there. So now I'm going to do the same thing, except I don't have numbers. So I start with g of x, so that's 4x plus 5, okay? But I'm going to do f to that, okay? f to g of x, which is just 4x plus 5. So how do I do that? Okay, this means do f of this guy. In the original problem, it said that f of this guy equals 6, this guy to the negative 2. So when I do this now, I'm going to be doing 6, but instead of an x, my this guy is 4x plus 5. And do that to the negative 2. And then, of course, since this is a negative exponent, just bring it down. The 6 has no ex negative exponent, so it stays up there. But that 4x plus 5 goes down and becomes a positive exponent. And that's my final answer. So I'm going to be doing more of these. This is not that scary at all. So in this one, I'm going to be doing g to f of x. And f of x is 6x to the negative 2. So instead of doing g of x, now I'm just going to replace my x with this everywhere. And so I get 4, instead of my x, I'm replacing it with this guy, 6x to the negative 2 plus 5. Okay, so this is just what I replace the x with. That's really all I do. Now 4 times 6 is 24x to the negative 2. Remember, since it's multiplication, don't do any weird distributing or anything. I just do 4 times 6 is 24, x to the negative 2, plus 5. All right, the 24 has no negative exponent associated with it, so it stays up. Only the negative 2 is touching the x, so that's the only thing that goes down. And then I do plus 5, and you can leave that as your final answer. Now this one looks funky, but it's really not. This one's just saying do g to g of x. And what is g of x? It's just 4x plus 5. So basically, this is saying, wherever you saw the x, put in a 4x plus 5. And so we get, let's see, 4, instead of an x, we're putting in a 4x plus 5, plus 5. So we get, now we're distributing the 4, because see, you have the plus sign. 16x plus 20, plus 5. In other words, 16x plus 25. Okay, fun stuff. Let's do the domain of each. All right, let's rewrite this as 6. The 6 stays up top. Only the negative is touching the x, so that's the only thing that goes down. So what is the domain of f? The domain is all real numbers, except that the denominator can't be equal to 0. So x squared can't be equal to 0. Let's see, our domain is going to be x squared does not equal 0. In other words, x does not equal 0. So we just say all real numbers except x equals 0. All real numbers except x equals 0. Now what's our domain of g? Well, g really has no restrictions. It's just a linear function. So all real numbers could go in to this function. There are no restrictions on that. So in A, when we look at our domain restriction, we have to first look at G, because that was the first thing we did. Did G have any restrictions? No. And then we look at our final answer. Okay, so you need to first look at this, because we did that first, and then look at F of G of X.
So our f of g of x actually did have a restriction because we can't let the 4x plus 5 squared equal 0. So our domain restriction is going to be that the 4x plus 5 squared cannot equal 0. Okay, so in other words, the 4x plus 5 cannot equal 0. 4x cannot equal negative 5. Our x cannot equal negative 5 fourths in this one. Since the g was not restricted, that means that the f of g of x, the domain is all real numbers except x equals negative 5 fourths. When we look at b, let's see there. Well, we first did f of x, and f was actually restricted to x does not equal 0. So we need to make sure that comes into account. But when we look at our final answer, this has the same domain restriction, right? The domain restriction in this one is uh, that that x squared cannot be equal to 0, x cannot be equal to 0. So that's just what my answer is there. All real numbers except x equals 0. But make sure that you're looking at the inside function first, and then you're looking at the final answer. So in part C, uh, well, g was all real numbers, and then the g of g of x, well, my final answer was just a linear function, not restricted at all. So that one's nice. There are no exceptions. It's all real numbers. Last problem, your starting wage for your part-time job was $6 an hour. All employees get a 5% raise after six months. So you get 5% after six months. You are given an additional raise of 75 cents per hour as a reward for your outstanding work. Find your new hourly wage if the 5% raise is applied before the 75 cent raise. So let's just set up something in general um, per hour what your raise would be. So if f of x is just, let's see, you get x dollars per hour, and now you get a 5% raise, so you get an additional 5% of what your hourly wage was before. And so that equals, let's see, 1 plus 0.05 is 1.05x. So that is just what everybody gets. And then your special gift for being so exceptional is that instead of getting X dollars per hour, you now get 75 cents more than that. Okay, part A, it says find your new hourly wage if the 5% raise is applied before the 75 cent raise. So we're gonna do 5% raise first. So let's just think through it first and then we'll show how the composition of functions works. So originally you were making $6 per hour and you get the 5% raise. So that becomes six plus, you get a 5% raise on that $6. In other words, you get $6.30 per hour. And then after that, you get a 75 cent raise. So you have the 630 and you get that 75 cent raise. In other words, you have $7.05 per hour is what you get after the raise. Okay, so now if we do the composition of functions way, now um, let's see, the 5% raise is applied first. So we are going to do the f of x first, and then we're going to do the 75 cent raise, so that happens second. So this is first. And actually, I know that my x is six in this case because x was just my um, hourly amount and I know I had six dollars per hour, so I'm going to just do g of f of six. And so let's do g to f of six. What is f of six? f of six is 1.05 times six. So let's do the inside first. 1.05 times six is 6.3, which is what we would have expected, right? And then we do g to that, so 6.3 plus 0.75 is just that $7.05 per hour. 
So I just want you to see that we mentally are doing composition of functions all the time. So don't think that this is anything that weird. It just looks a little bit different. I wrote it a little differently. So let's do the same thing here. Find your new hourly wage if the 75 cent raise is applied before. So I'm just going to do the composition of functions here. So I'm going to do the G first. And since we know the rate is six, I'm just putting the six in. And then we're gonna do the 5% after. So f of, you need to do the inside before you start, 6 plus 0.75. In other words, we're going to do f to 6.75. f is 1.05 times x, which is now 6.75. In other words, we have $7.09 about per hour. So you can see that the order here matters, and of course this is because we're doing, when we're doing 5%, we're doing the percent of the original amount, and if you have a higher original amount, then 5% of it's going to be more. And the same thing really goes with sales. So you might want to think about this. Um, you know, you go into a store or something, and you have a $10 off coupon, and you have a 5% off coupon. Which one would you want to apply first? in order for you to save the most money? It's a good question for you to think about. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.